Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. My name is Lizelle and for today's video, I am going to be doing a first impression. I haven't done one of these for quite some time, but I did recently pick up this foundation. This is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation and I know that this has been available overseas for quite some time, at least over a year as far as I'm aware, but it did recently get released here in Australia so I was able to get my hands on it and yeah, I'm just going to be testing it out for the first time today. I've never actually used any foundation from CoverGirl, I'm pretty sure, but I'm excited to see how this one goes on me. So if you are interested to see how it turns out, keep on watching. If you do enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you're new, you know what to do, join the crew by hitting the little red subscribe button down below and click the notification bell so you can stay updated with all the videos that I post. So like I said, this is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. If you guys are wondering, the shade that I picked up is number 725 Buff Beige. On the back of the bottle, it says that it is a lightweight, full coverage makeup. This formula hydrates and includes a complex of SPF 20 vitamins and an antioxidant. It also says that it is oil free, which is good because I do have a very, very oily skin type. Before I get into applying it to my face, I'm just gonna quickly read off what the claims are on the website as well. So it says that it is a hydrating vitamin infused formula for beautiful, buildable coverage that glides on smoothly for a flawless look. It also says that a special antioxidant and vitamin complex plus SPF 20 work together to make your skin look healthy all day, giving your skin a luminous glow. Now, from what I can see on the Priceline website, there are only 10 shades available. I'm not sure if that's like the only available shades that this foundation comes in, but I mean, that's like not too great if I'm being honest. I feel like not a lot of people would get to try this because of the fact that there's only 10 shades available. But in saying that, for me personally, I don't expect too much from a drugstore foundation to be that vast with their shade range. Obviously, you guys know that a lot of higher end foundations are really expanding their shade range. I mean, Fenty Beauty started off the trend with coming out with so many shades for their foundation. But when it comes to drugstore foundations, I feel like they don't really bother to cater to everybody's skin tones, which is sad. For me, I matched myself up to 725 Buff Beige and it looks kind of promising in the bottle, like I hope that it will match me. For me personally, I do have a very warm yellow golden olive undertone to my skin, so it is difficult for me to find a foundation that isn't too grey, too pink, just off from the colour that I need. But I mean, this one, like, it doesn't look too bad, so we'll have to see how it goes. So, in terms of packaging, I mean, I'm down with the glass bottle. I always love a foundation that comes in a glass bottle, especially one that has a pump. I feel like that is so important, and I don't see why a foundation would not come with a pump otherwise. It just makes it so much easier for application and just the ease of it being clean. So I love the fact that it comes in a glass bottle with a pump, but today, I don't know what I'm going to use to apply this. I have here the Sigma F80 Flat Top Kabuki Brush and also just a dampened Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. I'm not sure what the formula is like because I haven't even pumped this out of the bottle yet. So depending on whether the formula is runny or thick is what I'm going to decide like which um, tool I'm going to use to apply it. So I'm just going to go onto the back of my hand. Alrighty, that's two pumps. It looks fairly thick, like it's not really moving on the back of my hand, which I don't mind. And yeah, it definitely is thick in consistency. So let me just dab this onto my face. We'll just start off with that, I guess. It has a scent to it. I know a lot of people don't like scents, but this smells like a really nice like skincare product. So since it is thicker in consistency, I'm going to firstly try things with the dampened sponge just because I feel like for me personally, that's how I like to apply foundations that are thicker in consistency is with a sponge. All right, so. Color match ain't too bad, I think. We'll have to see whether it like oxidizes and all that stuff, you know? Oh, it smells so good, you guys. I actually really like the scent of this. It smells like a really good moisturizer. Okay, the color, I I 
like it so far it has like these weird okay i don't know if this is coming from the foundation or from my sponge i don't think it's coming from my sponge because i literally just washed this and i've never seen this before there's like all these tiny like white dots it looks like dust almost that's so weird so weird you can't tell on camera let me just continue applying this i'm gonna i'm gonna continue using this just because i feel like it's the right tool to use for this foundation because it is thicker so i'm just gonna go ahead and um continue applying this all over So this is how one layer is looking all over my skin. I feel like it's kind of, maybe my eyes are playing tricks on me, but it's kind of like turning a little bit darker, like it is already oxidizing on my skin. I still have plenty left on the back of my hand from those two pumps that I pumped out from the bottle. For me personally, I'd be happy with this coverage. Like I feel like it's definitely enough for me because I don't really have too much to cover up, but for the purpose of seeing whether this would be buildable or not, as it claims it is, I'm gonna go ahead and apply another layer all over and just see how it blends and applies over top of itself. So there we have it, that is the foundation all applied onto my skin. I feel like it looks nice, but my only thing is that, um, yeah, there's like this weird, I really don't know how to describe it, but it's like a weird layer of like white dots on my skin. It's like, they're like little dust particles or something sitting on the top of my skin. It's so strange. It's honestly so strange because you really can't tell from far away. It's just like when I'm looking in the mirror up close, I see these like little dots. I don't know how to describe it. And I, I'm i pretty sure it's not from my sponge because I've never seen this before. And I always use this to apply liquid foundations. So yeah, I don't know what it is, but um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and apply the rest of my makeup. I'll come back, let you guys know how it applied over top. It doesn't feel heavy on my skin at the moment. It feels pretty comfortable. I don't feel like I'm wearing two layers of heavy foundation. It just feels like normal, nothing crazy. I mean, it feels a little bit tacky, but I haven't really let it set down and dry just yet. So I don't think I'm gonna go ahead and apply a powder just because I wanna see how the foundation works on its own and how my own makeup applies on top of it by itself. So yeah, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead finish off the rest of my face makeup, I'll check back in with you guys and let you know how it did and we'll go from there. So I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. As you can see, I have finished off the rest of my face makeup. In terms of applying the rest of my products over top of the foundation, I didn't really have like too much of a problem, so to speak. Everything applied over top pretty easily. Even when I was contouring and bronzing, I didn't find that the powder products were really skipping and like catching on to the liquid foundation, if that makes sense. So in saying that, I feel like it's not completely necessary to set the foundation with a powder, but in normal circumstances, I would because I do have a very oily skin type. I just didn't want to for the purpose of testing it out for this video today. So yeah, I don't really have a problem with applying any of my other products over the top. One thing I have noticed though, I don't know if it's so noticeable on camera, is that it has oxidized. I feel like it's, um, it's gotten darker, I think. I feel like when I was applying it in the beginning, it did look like a pretty good match, but I did notice that yeah, it's oxidized. You can't really tell on camera now, especially with my lighting setup, plus I've like highlighted and contoured my face, so it kind of looks like it matches pretty well, but in natural lighting, I feel like it does look quite dark and almost pink in comparison to my neck, which is kind of disappointing because I did think that it had a yellow undertone. I mean, 
when I applied it, it did have a yellow undertone as far as I could tell. But on me personally, I guess it has oxidized. It is different for everybody though. I mean, it's not always the case. If you don't have an oily skin type, it may not oxidize. If you do, it may not. It really just depends on how your skin reacts to a foundation in my opinion. But yes, for me, it definitely has oxidized. At the moment, it does feel pretty comfortable on my skin. It doesn't feel heavy at all. And you guys know me, I don't like to wear liquid foundation on a regular basis. I really only wear it for tutorials. I typically just like to wear a powder, but for this, it doesn't feel heavy. So I'm pretty happy with that. For the most part, I don't have too many negative opinions about it just yet. The only thing that I have to say is I don't understand, like I'm looking in the mirror right now, I don't understand why there's like these tiny little light dust particle looking dots all over my face. It's, it's weird. It kind of looks like I took some loose translucent powder, dusted it onto my face and didn't blend it in. I don't know, it's so strange. I don't know if it's something in the formula or what, because I don't see anything in the bottle. And I'm damn sure that it's not the sponge that I used to apply it because I've never seen this before. So yeah, we're just going to have to see how that goes. But for the most part now, I'm going to go ahead, continue on with my day. I will check back in with you guys later on for an update. And then I will also give my final thoughts and opinions at the end of the day. So for now, I will see you guys in a few. Okay, guys, I'm back with an update for you all. At this point, I have been wearing the foundation now for around five hours and I actually just got home. So I haven't even had a chance to look in the mirror and kind of see how things are sitting. So that's actually what I'm going to do right now is take a look in the mirror and you guys will see my first reaction. Oh, you know what? This actually doesn't look too bad. I still see those little dots on my face though. Like I, I really don't get what that is, but I do feel like my face looks very glowy. I don't know if it's just because I'm super oily. I mean, my face doesn't feel oily, but it just, yeah, it looks really glowy which I like. So I don't mind how it's looking on my skin at the moment, but I do have to say that if I'm being completely honest, I do feel like it's kind of looking just like a little bit cakey around this area of my face here, I guess, cause that's where I naturally get oily the quickest as it is. So yeah, it kind of looks cakey like around here. And if I touch my face, I mean, it ain't too bad. It's okay. So for the most part, I mean, on camera, I feel like it looks really good in person. When I'm looking at it up close, it, it's a little bit of a different story, but I'm not mad at it. Like, I feel like it looks okay. So that is my update for now. Like I said, I've been wearing it for about five hours. I'm going to let it go for a couple more before I decide to end my day, take it off and all that. But for now, I think it doesn't look too bad. So... I'll be back with a final update in a few. Okay guys, I'm back with my final update for you all. At this point, I have been wearing the foundation now for a little over eight hours and I'm definitely ready to go and have a hot shower, wash all this cake off and just relax. But before I do that, let's take a look in the mirror and see how things are looking. To be honest, I don't really think much has changed purely because I've just been sitting here in front of the computer doing some work. So yeah, as I can see, like not too much has changed since I last gave you guys an update, which is a good thing, I guess. I mean, everything has pretty much stayed as is. Naturally, as the day goes on, of course, I am going to only get oilier and oilier. So I do see that I do have like a little bit of like, like a little bit of cakiness going on around here, like I did say in my last update, but it's nothing too major. Like it's not crazy. Nothing has shifted, which is good. Everything has stayed in place. Nothing's really moved around or like settled into any fine lines or anything like that. From what I can see in the monitor, it actually, looks kind of nice like it just looks like i have a really nice healthy glow i also have to take into consideration the fact that i do have these studio lights blaring on my face right now so that could be a contributing factor as to why my face just looks like it's beaming but i mean i'm into it i also have to take into consideration i forgot this that i didn't set my face with any type of powder because obviously i can see with the areas where i applied concealer like underneath my eyes it is pretty matte for the most part but I don't know if you guys can see the glow that's going on like literally everywhere else on my face, especially my forehead. 
that is even. But I'm kind of liking how it looks, that it's like glowy and luminous and just dewy. I'm into that. So I'd have to say for my final thoughts and opinions on the foundation, I did complain throughout the video about the little dots that were appearing all over my face. They're still there. It just, I don't know how to explain it. It's like little dust particles on the surface of my skin. They're definitely there. Like I'm not imagining it and it's not like if I'm patting them into the skin they're going away they're just shifting around so I really like I have no idea what that is but I feel like if the foundation didn't have that then I probably would be more inclined to recommend it to you guys granted it is a good foundation I honestly after eight hours of wear don't feel like my face feels heavy or cakey and it has given me super full coverage bear in mind that I did apply two layers in the very beginning and it still held up really well so aside from little dust particles that I have going on in my face I do like the foundation. I also did mention that it did oxidize a little and it has continued to oxidize. Like I feel like it looks a little bit darker than my neck and my chest. But I feel like with the help of highlighting, contouring and bronzing that kind of masked that so it wasn't too big of a deal for me. But yeah, I feel like if this is a foundation that you wanted to try for yourself, it is definitely one that may be worth trying. I don't know whether I just got a really weird one that had the dust particles in it. So I'd have to say that I would be willing to recommend it to you guys, but that's just my first experience with the foundation is the dust particles. Like I cannot reiterate that enough. <laughs> but in saying that, I am definitely going to have to continue to try this and use it and see whether it was my application tool, application technique, I don't know, I'm just gonna have to test it out some more and see how I feel about it. So there we have it, you guys. Those were my first impressions on the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. If you have actually tried it yourself, let me know in the comments below because I want to know whether anybody else has had the same problem with it that I have, aka the dust particles. I'm actually really curious to get to the bottom of that and figure out why that is the case with this one. I really, like I'm looking in the bottle, I can't see anything, so I don't know what it is. But yeah, you guys, that's pretty much it for this video. So if you found this video helpful or you did enjoy it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're still here at the end watching, hit the little red subscribe button down below if you aren't already subscribed to my channel so you don't miss any more videos that I post. I'm going to leave the details and links and the color and all that good stuff that you may be wanting to know down in the description box below along with all the links to my social media accounts. So if you guys want to keep up with me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook or Snapchat, all that good stuff is as always down below. Alrighty, so just quickly before I end off this video, comment of the day goes to... I'm gonna leave your comment right here. You were actually first to comment on my previous video and I apologize in advance if I'm about to butcher your name, but I think your name is Twee. I'm scared. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. I apologize. But yeah, girl, thanks for commenting first on my last video. I do see your name pop up sometimes, so I do recognize you. And um, yeah, I just want to say thank you for all the support. As always, if you want to be part of my future comment of the days, leave me some comments down below. With that being said, I will chat to you guys in the comments and I shall see you all in my next video. <laughs>